Thank you, Eleanor. So, what I want to talk about today is about nuclear power. Now, nuclear power is a topic that can kind of polarise people's opinions. But today, I'm going to convince you, hopefully in the next few minutes, that nuclear power is exactly what we need, and that we've discovered, in Miguel's lab, a new way of generating nuclear energy. But, of course, I'm talking about energy in the form of ATP within the nucleus of cells. Now, what can we say about ATP in the body, and energy in the body? Energy is contained within a molecule called adenosine triphosphate, and this relatively inconspicuous molecule is absolutely amazing. I thought about a prop for today to bring along to show the importance of ATP, but you were all kind enough to bring yourselves, and we are ATP machines. ATP cannot be stored, and I want you to bear that in mind, because during today, you will generate approximately 46 kilos of ATP every single day. What is the energy required for? It's required for everything in the cells. But especially for me, and of interest in our lab, is the nucleus. Now, the energy requirements of the nucleus are immense, but these energy requirements are met simply by the ATP being generated in the mitochondria and diffused into the nucleus. Now the nucleus contains, as we know, all our genetic information and it's not merely a soup of DNA. It's in the structure of chromatin. And in order to activate genes, repress genes, dynamics within the nucleus, this requires huge amounts of energy. So the, the nucleus is quite greedy when it comes to this. And if you look at a very small unit of the DNA, this would be a nucleosome. It's 140 base pairs, very small. In order to move this tiny piece of DNA, you need 150 molecules of ATP. And just think how many you need to remodel the whole nucleus. So our question is, what if it's not enough? What if something happens and the ATP from the mitochondria is not enough to sustain what you need to take place? This all came about from an observation that we have in our model system. What we use are mammalian cells and their breast cancer cells. And what we do is we treat these cells with progesterone, and within minutes of progesterone treatment, we have a global change in the structure of the nucleus. Within hours of progesterone treatment, with the activation or repression of thousands of genes, and within days of hormone treatment, these cells will actually proliferate. Now what we observed was that, very quickly after adding hormone, this is immunofluorescence, we saw a huge accumulation of a molecule called ADP ribose. Now this ADP ribose accumulated, and if we blocked its formation, we actually found that all the genes regulated by hormone, regulated by progesterone, were blocked when we blocked the production of this molecule. And that was when we kind of thought, well, what is this molecule? Adenosine diphosphate ribose? And it's a post-translational modification, like phosphorylation, for example. But unlike phosphorylation, which would be a single modification on its target protein, ADP ribose is incredible. What happens is that you have one unit, and then another one, and another one, and another one, and another one. You can have up to 200 in length. They're huge. In addition to that, every 40 or so, you have a branch, and you have another 200. And so this molecule has been called the third type of nucleic acid, as it can have a structure a helical structure like DNA. So, given this observation, we had a look at what is the function of ADP ribose normally. So, normally when cells are damaged or undergo severe stress, ADP ribose levels increase dramatically. But this is in conjunction with a decrease in ATP as you need a lot of energy to make this molecule. And cells will die. But, as I said, it's not what we see. In our cells, our cells proliferate, we have an increase in this molecule, but then a consequent decrease. So that got us thinking. And this is, why would you make it in order just to get rid of it in a couple of minutes? It makes no sense. It must have a function. So that was the bing moment. What if we could generate energy via ADP ribose? If we look at the structure of ADP ribose, and the structure of ATP is in adenosine, ribose, and phosphate groups. They're very similar. And if we see this accumulation and then a decrease, is it possible that this could happen? Is this a way of generating ATP independent of mitochondria, independent of what you read in the textbooks about ATP? And we weren't the first 
crazy people to think this. In fact, Vincent Alfrey and the Rockefeller Institute in 1957 suggested just this. He measured ATP in the nucleus and suggested that it was contained and specifically utilized by some complex. As yet, poly-ADP ribose or ADP ribose had not been discovered. So, when you have a problem and nobody else can fix it, then there's only one group to call. And that would be our A team. Unfortunately, Miguel wasn't up for having Mr. T around the lab. <laughs> but I was able to get these probes. Now, these probes are very specific. You put them in your cells, and what happens is you can have them in the mitochondria, the nucleus, or the cytoplasm. If it's yellow, there's lots of ATP. If it's blue, there's not a lot. So basically, this gives us a mechanism to measure ATP specifically in cells live under the microscope. We put our breast cancer cells in the microscope, we add hormone at the microscope, and we measure ATP levels specifically in the nucleus. So that's exactly what we did. And what you see here is the ratio. If it's blue, it's low amounts of ATP, and if it's high, if it's red, sorry, it's high amounts of ATP. So we, if you're gonna see some videos here, and these are nuclei, breast cancer cells, with these 18 inside, and what you should see is that when we treat them with hormone, you have a dramatic increase, uh, right, this is the timing here, you'll start to see the ATP being produced, and then bam, these nuclei are full of ATP, you know? But what happens if we do the same thing, exactly the same experiment, would we block the formation or we block the degradation of ADP ribose? We no longer have ATP generation specifically in the nucleus. So, what can we say? We can say that we have shown that we have an accumulation and a degradation of ADP ribose in our cells as a result of a trigger, a response. This results in the formation of ATP within the nucleus. But that might, it's interesting as is, for the independence of the mitochondria. However, what does that mean for the nucleus itself? It means we have ATP where we need it. If we have active chromatin, we have it there. We avoid an energy crisis. The cells don't die. We have energy when we need it. But most importantly, now we have a mechanism of storing ATP in the body for exactly when we need it. Implications for this, if you think about cancer, if you think about growth, invasion, and metastases, if you think of reprogramming, all these processes require huge amounts of energy. And we suppose that this is a mechanism that we've described is also utilized in these processes. So I'd just like to thank everybody in the lab, of course, Miguel, all of you for your attention, and the PRBB for giving me the opportunity to speak today. Thank you very much.